Okay, we are going to discuss some of the new changes for the 2014 Bearcat Roadtech RX Million Machine skid. Um, this skid could be an emulsion skid or a foaming skid and all these features are available on either. So to get started with, uh, you'll notice the home page is pretty much the same as it's been. With one exception, we now have this width measurement in the center. So to get started with, I'm going to turn on some FPM. Oops. Sorry, wrong one. Okay, I'm going to turn on some FPM. which as you can see brings on our spray and water. So right now we're set up with 11 feet and we've got 11 nozzles showing. The new uh, requested feature is if we go back to settings is they would like to be able to control individual nozzles so to control individual nozzles you would go here to nozzle on off once that's selected you'll use your left or right arrow select over and then up or down down would turn it off we can go over here and select another one turn that off hit OK we're out of that selection if we hit escape back to the main menu now you can see we've turned these two nozzles off you can turn any of the nozzles off all the way up to all of them off. The pump will still be calculating on the 11 feet cutter width that we set up. So this, this will not affect your pump calculation for how much asphalt you are putting into your milled material. Now if we go back to our settings and we're still set up like that, the other request was what we call half nozzles. That's a quicker way maybe to select less nozzles. If you select half nozzles, and it'll explain what half nozzles is, you'll notice it overrides any individual selections here and it goes to what we call half nozzles and it turns off every other nozzle. From the left it turns off every even nozzle. So this would be nozzle 1. It turned off 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10 we go back to our home page we are still calculating on 11 feet but now we're only spraying out of every other nozzle this may be good if you're running at lower flow rates to uh, help the foaming process if you're foaming or just help in spraying your emulsion or asphalt to get it to spray out of the nozzle and atomize it a little more okay so let's go back and turn our half nozzles off. We're back. I hit OK or hit Escape and now we are back to where we had selected individual nozzles to be turned off. Now we're still calculating on 11 gallons a minute. Now I'm just putting a simulated FPM and GPM in here because I can't close the loop. This isn't on a machine that I'm running. So if we were to, let's say we were running two different mills and we had one mill out in front milling and putting a windrow into the mill that's actually injecting the material. What we could do is say, let's go ahead and just get back to all our normal nozzles. That's back on, move over, that's back on, okay. What we could do, let's say we've got a five foot mill up in front of us, we could increase this to 16 feet. We still have an 11 foot cutter head on this mill. Now we are calculating our pump flow on So our GPM would increase, 
because now we are calculating on 16 feet wide. So remember, our calculation on an RX milling machine is the width times the depth times the density of your material, which the density you would set up in, in cal values. Right now I've got 3,500 pounds per cubic yard. This isn't, like I say, calculating the right GPM because I don't have um, a closed loop system. But remember, it's width times depth times speed divided by 27. That would give us our cubic yards per minute times our percentage of asphalt, which in this case is 3%. So we would end up needing 320 pounds of asphalt per minute. 320 pounds divided by 8.4 pounds per gallon would give us 38 GPM in this particular scenario. Now you'll notice that we can change any one of these values and then our GPM would change. So we could change our width, we could change our speed, we could change our depth, or we could change the density. That's how many pounds per cubic yard without we're milling. All right, another new thing that we added is um, circulate on off. When you go to circulate on, that's what we've been in, is circulate on. Everything's going to be working the same as what we've just shown you. But now if we go to circulate off, what happens when we go to stop spreading, our pump would go to zero GPM. So this would be the situation and actually our, if we stopped, we're at zero. So now we've gone to, <clears throat> everything is stopped and you'll notice that our circulate GPM has gone to zero also instead of the normal circulating at 30 gallons a minute. So this would be in a case if you had a machine that didn't have a circulate line back or for some reason you just don't want to circulate when you're not spreading, you can actually turn that off. So now your circulate valve would stay um, closed, so it's not going to circulate, and your pump would go to zero instead of circulate speed. Let's see, also if you go to your cal values, this is all the same, your density, most, almost nobody has slurry water density and then you have your more we calibrate when we build the skid and should be written inside the door of your machine what that asphalt pump calculation and what that water pump calculation was um, this gets calibrated per your machine when you run it over a thousand feet if if you don't read a thousand feet then you can adjust that also, we had a limited the original machines to like 6,500 feet. Um, as you'll notice now, we're already up to 21,000 feet and still counting. So uh, that's some of the changes, and uh, we'll do some more videos on just overall usage of the system.